In 2016, I came across this manga under the topics of music, drama and romance. It was given. Music is at the core of that series and it is ultimately what sparked me the idea to create this episode. You and I will talk about Mail Say You in BL, how music from projects of that nature is actually worth checking out. And there will be some talk about recordings. Let's kick off this episode of Say You Lounge. <laughs> Welcome to See You Lounge, I am your host Vanessa and today's topic is Mail See You, BL and Music. This episode was crafted in collaboration with a friend of the channel and a specialist in all things BL, Emphi from the YouTube channel and podcast BL Suggestion Project. For those fans of everything BL and Spanish or Portuguese speakers, BL Suggestion Project is filled with awesome reviews on the latest content in that part of the entertainment industry in Japan. I invite you to check the links in the description to get to know a bit more about them. A big thank you for the insights and in-depth look at the BL history. Of course, don't expect me to get really specific about BL manga or anime. I'm no expert about it, that's why I collaborated with an expert to begin with. But I do hope you have fun learning a bit about BL, how recordings work, points of contact with the music industry and more. This is a refreshing twist to those topics that may interest you. If it's your first time hearing about BL, do stick around as I'll be covering the basics and don't be afraid as I won't cover explicit themes or the sort. This is a family-friendly podcast after all. To start off, a couple of definitions to help you understand what I'll be talking about. BL stands for Boys Love. Shonana is actually a softer, more innocent version of Boys Love. To put it simply, it doesn't focus on fan service. Fujoshi is the term used to describe women that love Boys Love manga, anime or drama CDs. The term for men is Fudanshi and for older men is Fuke. The gender-neutral version of these terms is Fujin. Seme and Uke are basically the two participants in a BL relationship. Up until, I dare say, the last five years, the Seme was the masculine and dominant person with an imposing physique and usually a rough or arrogant personality to go with. Whereas the Uke was usually the one with the feminine or androgynous looks and a submissive personality. Those conceptions seem to have changed with time and now there's a bit more flexibility in the way both parts are represented. Now that you're up to speed, let's talk about BL, music, recordings and auditions. So what is BL? As I've said before, BL stands for Boys Love. Genre that is defined for having at its core romantic stories between men. Calling a manga or anime BL only started in the 90s, when Japanese magazines started to standardize these type of stories, thus needing to categorize them. As this is a genre with stories usually created by women, for women, at times it does not reflect the reality of what gay couples go through in Japan. Still, these stories are for everyone and there's plenty to choose from, including romance, psychological horror, sports, drama or just erotica. Although many people will get the impression that BL is usually focused on fan service, there are mangas out there that actually stray away from that and keep those elements to a bare minimum. A good example of that is Sasaki Tomiano, that is getting an anime adaptation in 2022. Even Given, that I mentioned earlier, keeps those elements to a bare minimum, focusing instead in the human drama going on. To put it simply, BL is only a label to help categorize the main genre, however, there's more to it. 
genre defining authors or mangakas. The most important ones are undoubtedly Takemiya Keiko and Hajio Moto. They were the ones that created the term Shonanai in the 70s. This term would later be the inspiration for what we now know as BL. Interestingly enough, in the 70s, Shonanai was a subgenre of shoujo which dealt with love stories among young people. Although a bit controversial, especially taking into account the themes at the core of the works she's published, Shungiku Nakamura is another important figure. Junjo Romantica and Sekaichi Hatsukoi have ended up being extremely popular in Japan and overseas, even getting several anime adaptations. You can also add Ko Yoneda and Ramaru Zarya, mangakas that dive a bit deeper into complex relationships. The big names in BL. Well, I believe this is a well-known fact. Toshiyuki Morikawa is synonymous with BL. After all, he's called the BL Emperor by everyone in the CU industry. It has gotten to the point that Morikawa himself even holds events to celebrate his career in BL, as well as hosting shows to teach younger seiyuu to be better in their roles in BL. He's the most active seiyuu in this field and one of the very few seiyuu over 50 years old that still works in BL. Other big names include Hikaru Midorikawa, Shinichiro Miki, Takehito Koyasu, or even Kosuke Toriyumi. They are old school and basically none of them are active in BL anymore. Still, when it comes to big names in this field, these are the seiyuu you must check because they have influenced a whole generation of seiyuu now working in BL that took their roles and performances as guides to their own work. Chill Chill Awards like voice acting in Japan, anime, drama, games or even singing, that is awarded at the yearly Seiyu Awards, there's a whole awards ceremony dedicated to celebrating the best voice actors and works in BL. It's called the Chill Chill Awards. And when it comes to the most important award, Best Seiyu, there have been some really popular names winning it at least once. Those include Tarusuke Shingaki, Kazuyuki Okitsu, Soma Saito, Makoto Furukawa and Yuki Ono. Although they have yet to win the award, Takuya Sato, Wataru Hatano and Tomoaki Maino are always within top 10 in those votings. These are, like the Seiyu Awards, really important for Seiyu, as mentioned by Yoshiki Nakajima and Yusuke Shirai, during an episode of Nakajima Yoshiki no Fuburaji, dating back to 2018 and 2019. Seiyuu and BL live action. Believe it or not, there are actually two things that fit this title. In 2007, Wataru Hatanu was cast in the live action BL movie and the Spring Breeze Whispers from the Takumi-kun series. Hatano played the role of Michio Yoshizawa, student at the all-boys high school Shindo Academy. That was a small role with very few scenes, still, it was the very first time Seiyuu acted in a BL live-action movie. Then, in 2021, Yoshiki Nakajima, Kento Ito, Reio Tsuchida and Yukisa Kakihara helmed the unique BL and Rakugo crossover TV show Bokura Tekini wa Riso no Rakugo, shortened to Bokuraku. For this TV show, all four seiyuu acted as members of the Rakugoka family, Mosote, that specializes in telling BL stories. The four Rakugokas frequent a coffee shop and there they observe the customers and clerk and develop BL stories from their interactions. Those stories are then acted by the seiyuu as Rakugokas, imagining or crafting the story. 
So while the Seiyuu cast appeared on camera, they were not acting the couples portrayed in those feverish stories. Still, it was one of the most innovative and honestly hilarious things that brought together Seiyuu, who confessed they are avid readers of BL, live-action BL and Rakugo. This sounds a bit complex, but it works pretty well in the series and it never gets too racy, so you can check it if you are curious but want to avoid excessively racy series. Although rare, say you have stepped out of their comfort zone behind the mic and actually acted in live-action BL series or movies. Music and BL this is a rare connection, but one that exists. Initially, character songs for BL works didn't have a high production. Firstly, because some date back to the late 90s, early 90s and back then, character songs were starting to be a thing, yet the industry didn't know that well how to create engaging songs with Seiyuu as the singers. Then, in the mid 90s the quality went up a bit. Enough to be noticeable the difference in the instrumentals, the care put into the music composition and equally on the performances by Seiyuu that started to put some focus on singing well. So music and BL are not a strange blend. Actually, you may be a fan of songs that have BL works at their core. Most of you may be familiar with the manga, drama CD or anime series Given. This is currently the BL series with the biggest connection to music and actually a band has stemmed from this franchise itself, having Shogo Yanu, Mafuyu's voice in the anime adaptation, as their frontman. Given's manga and drama CDs have been widely popular for a couple of years and that has led to an anime adaptation. Music is at the center stage in this series but more than just a theme that drives the story forward, it actually plays an important role in summing up the feelings of the protagonist, Mafuyu. There's double casting for the character between drama CDs and anime. Soma Saito is in charge of voicing the character in the drama CDs and Shogo Yano is the voice of its anime version. Both have embraced the character in completely different ways, delivering unique performances that suit their approaches to Mafuyu's emotions. But looking back in time, there have been occasions in which BL projects actually ended up having character songs, good ones to boot. A good example of that is the character song Arrival, performed by Toshiyuki Morikawa and Shinichiro Miki, the voices behind Kato and Iwaki in Haruo Daiteita manga that got drama CDs and later on an anime series of sorts. The anime Kyo Karamao also has wonderful songs and if you really want to listen to Takahiro Sakurai singing, he does so and shines in songs like Be Alright and Shiro Tokuro. Still, it's good to have into attention how rarely that happens. There are other BL works that have music but since this is a PG-13 episode, I won't mention the names of those. As you can expect, music connected to BL works will of course reflect the stories the characters go through. Their fears, passions, traumas, defining moments and even serve as a realization of plot points. Out of all songs released as tie-ups to BL anime or drama CDs, the ones in Given have the best production. In the drama CDs, you have the rawness that comes from indie rock bands, with a simple production plus the stripped-down emotions by Soma Saito as Mafuyo. In the anime adaptation and later on in the album released by the band that actually stemmed from the anime of the same name, you have a higher production that strays a bit away from what you'd expect from an indie rock band and the vocals sound a bit more contained to match those instrumentals. In a way, I feel like the fact that the anime adaptation and thus the music in it have a high production that has led to the music not conveying as well the feelings in the lyrics despite Shogo Yano's good job on the vocal end. 
In 2021, Mosote Ichimon Group, that I mentioned a couple of minutes ago as part of Bokuraku, released the single Mosote no Tema. This is actually a pretty entertaining song that plays around with stereotypes in BL, has some crafty word plays to mask a couple of risque lyrics, and it stems from a BL TV series. If you feel like exploring music from BL works, given Kyo Karamao, Haruwa Daiteita, and even the group Mosote Ichimo have good songs to enjoy, even as standalone. Auditions. One of the good things behind drama CDs is that these do not require auditions. In this case, the mangaka or sensei directly choose the seiyuu they want to voice the characters they created. Drama CDs don't pay that well, as opposed to games, narration or dubbing, but as one-offs they can be an extra source of money for CU. plus, since there is no casting, there is no bias by the directors, only the word of the mangaka is king, which leads to pretty interesting drama CD casts that you'd basically never find in anime. It actually gives an opportunity for newcomers to have a shot at roles with some importance. Castings Since there are no auditions for drama CDs, you can safely say that there are castings and those are more often than not directed by the mangakas themselves. Do you have casts with younger or older seiyuu? The tendency is for seiyuu to step away from BL work when they get really famous. Don't want to continue to associate their name to this type of work for various reasons, or even because they are growing older and it's time to move on to different things within the seiyuu industry. As a result, veteran seiyuu participation in BLCDs is a bare minimum, with established names like Toshiyuki Morikawa still having a strong presence, but you mostly have younger seiyuu. The difference is today, when seiyuu get really popular, most don't stop working in this field. Good examples of that are Takuya Gucci, Soma Saito and Yumo Uchida. With both veterans, the hottest stars and new talents, you can say that there's a wide variety of voices and performances to enjoy in BLCDs that you usually wouldn't find in anime due to the auditions being, at times, rigged. Say you not taking part in BL works. This is an interesting topic. There are say you that do not want to take part in BL works. And that's usually because of the image they have and want to continue to have. A seiyuu with a kids-friendly image will not want to venture to BL because doing so puts a label on them and for future anime works, they may not be cast due to the fact that with a simple search on the web, kids can come across work that is not intended for their age. Imawari Gekidan, talent agency that represents Mamoru Mianu, Ryohei Kimura and Koki Uchiyama, does not allow their talents to partake in BL work. And that's because that talent agency is known for representing child actors. Then there are seiyuu that may have prejudice about BL work or even gay people, and thus they won't even be cast in BL works because they don't want to. So yeah, there may be a reason your favorite CU is not cast in BL works. Recordings BLCD recordings are done in a similar way to anime. Back in the 90s and early noughties, BLCD recordings were done face-to-face, -face, with the two voice actors in the main cast facing each other for the duration of the whole recording. Seiyu like Koyasu Takehito liked to tease his co-protagonists by playing around with their hands during recording, as reported by Kape Yamaguchi and Toshiki Morikawa during a radio show, which I completely forgot the name of it, in the mid noughties Since the tens, recordings work similar to anime. The recording is done inside of a soundproofed recording studio and the seiyuu stand in front of the mic alongside the whole cast that takes turns to record their scenes. Before COVID-19 struck, recordings were done in that format. Now, as it is reported by seiyuu themselves, 
The recordings are held only with the main pair in attendance and the rest of the CU are split into different recording sessions with everything being put together in post-production. This is due to the fact that now there is a limit to the number of people that can be in the same room to record. For a more detailed talk about recordings, I invite you to check episode 13 of CU Lounge. What is so appealing about BL? For many of you watching or listening to this episode, you'll probably say the fan service. That's a part of BL. Of course, there is another side of the coin, the stories. There are stories for all tastes, some more controversial than others, but if you know where to look, there are authors or mangakas that actually create rich stories for you to dive into. Ko Yoneda and Natsuki Kizu are two good examples of that. Both extremely cinematic in their panels and focused almost completely in delivering a good story more so than fan service. Well, as a reader that enjoys a wide variety of genres, I recommend BL works by these two authors. Especially if you want to enjoy a good story without focusing too much on smut or anything beyond that. At the same time, there's the appeal behind listening to new voices in the seiyuu industry that usually wouldn't get the opportunity to be lead voice actors in anime series. Or even an awesome opportunity for you to check the emotional depth and how varied can be the performances of your favorite voice actors. There's more to be LCD recordings than the smut sections. These are still tricky to pull off and there's a whole technique that needs to be in the CU's acting arsenal for those scenes. However, emotional depth is, more often than not, crucial to make a story connect with the listener. Chemistry also helps making the performances not sound awkward, regardless if it is a regular scene or not. It is at this point that you notice some close friendships in the seiyuu industry. For example, Soma Saito and Yoshiki Nakajima, Tarusuke Shingaki and Takuya Sato, Makoto Furukawa and Soma Saito, and so on and so forth. Whenever those pairs of close friends work together in BL works, chemistry is added to the performances and everything sounds a notch higher in quality, from the comedic to the angsty, or even the romantic scenes. All in all, if you do have an open mind, there are not only interesting stories to read or listen to, but also outstanding performances by Seiyu when it comes to BL. This was a simple introduction to the world of BL that covered everything from what it is, the important mangakas, award-winning seiyuu, music, live action, castings and recordings. Once again, if you want to get to know more, after all, this episode was created in collaboration and with the insights of an avid fan and specialist in all things BL, I welcome you to check Enfi's work at the YouTube channel BL Suggestion Project. A big thank you once again to Enfi for this cool collaboration that I hope will shed a different light about this side of the entertainment industry. Now tell me, is your favorite CU active in BL works? And what do you like the most about their voice and performances? Let me know in the comments. And remember, leave your comments as complex or as simple as they may be, and you can be featured on upcoming episodes of Say You Lounge. If you enjoyed this episode and don't want to miss the Hand That Feeds HQ's weekly mail Say You and music-related content, hit the subscribe button. I'll return next week with another episode of Say You Lounge. Thank you for listening and see you guys around.